Hello and welcome to the first of a couple of tutorials animating our IK man, that's one we've already set up inverse kinematics on the man, animating him to music. The first one's going to be about selecting the music and making sure that we've got as close as we can get to a loopable cycle, so it's pretty much as close to on the beat as we can get. And the second one will be of actually doing the animation itself. So I've got my IK man here. I'm assuming that you've followed the previous two tutorials when we've used the Duet script, we've installed the script, and I've set up my man to do a walk cycle. I'm just going to do a couple of bits and pieces just to uh, sort the man out and make sure he's sorted out properly. So I've got left and right, and as you can see I've got a left hand controller and a left foot controller, holding my command with control key to select those, and I'm actually going to change their colour. I'm also going to make those cyan, so that they're clearly a different colour to the right and I'm going to then select the right foot and the right hand and I'm going to make those ones green so that we can see the difference between them and then any of the other controllers are to do with different parts of his body also I need a main controller and I just want to show you a quick tip about the main controller in the previous tutorial I showed you that you created the main controller from a null object so I'm just going to go layer new null object and I'm going to move that null object to the base of my man and that's going to be my main controller of which I will parent everything else. However, there is a problem, and I'll just show you what the problem is. So I'm going to take the pelvis and, uh, in fact, everything down to there, and I'm going to parent all of those controllers to my main controller. So my main controller is now going to pretty much move everything else around. So if I select that main controller and I move it, you can see everything's going to move. But the problem is, if I accidentally scale it, you can see that I can accidentally scale my man into ridiculous poses, Control z to undo that. So what we need to do is make sure that this controller cannot scale. And we can do that with an incredibly simple expression. So if you actually select the layer, I'm going to rename that as my master control. Select the layer and then hit S for scale. And we're going to add an expression to scale. So Alt click on the stopwatch for scale. And this is what you type, open square brackets, 100 comma 100 close square brackets and then you either click away or enter on your number pad now what I'm saying with this little expression is that the X and the Y may only ever be 100 and 100 so they may not go smaller or larger so that if I actually select that null object and I try and scale it now I can't do because the expression is saying, oh no, it cannot be anything else except 100 and 100. So you can't then accidentally go in and take your master controller, select it and accidentally scale it. You can move your whole item around and you're not going to have a problem with scaling. And again, a master controller probably ought to have a very different colour as well. So what we'll do is we will change that one to yellow. A bit hard to see against that background, but if I turn off the checkerboard, you can see the different colours very clearly. So the man is ready to animate. But the next thing we need to do is select the music that he's going to animate to and then get in and make sure that we get as close as possible to a loop. Now the problem that you have with getting a perfect walk cycle that's absolutely on the beat is to do with the way that music is sampled and the way that video is sampled. So for example I've got a, a PAL sequence, you might have an NTS sequence which is effectively, PAL is 25 samples a second or frames a second NTSC is 29.97 or 30 frames a second, so samples a second. Whereas music, if it's recorded at a CD level, it's 44,100 samples a second. And if it's music that's recorded at DVD quality, it's 48,000 samples a second. So the problem you have is that we've got these very big samples of 25 a second versus 44,100 a second, which means that you can't ever get close enough to do a perfect, absolute bang-on walk cycle because the 25 frames a second will not allow us to get absolutely bang on the beat every time. You can get close, but you're never going to be able to make it absolutely perfect. But what you'll end up with is drift. So that as the man's walking through, he's kind of on the beat, but as he goes through longer and longer over time, he drifts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find some music that's got a, an identifiable beat. And um, I've spoken to the people over at premiumbeat.com, and they've said I'm allowed to use some of their bits and pieces as an example so that you can actually hear the audio, and we're going to download one of their sample example watermark audio. Now the advantage of a system like Premium Beat is that when you actually get to a particular piece of music, let's just choose one of the acoustic ones here, 
and uh, let's go to uh, let's look the second one down, Morning Wanderer, and you can actually play an example of that. I'm just going to click to play. Now, as you can see, that's got a really good beat, a strong beat that you can walk to. It's going to be a relatively fast walk, but that's not bad, and that's something that we can work with. So I'm just going to push port, and as you can hear, it's watermarked. So that's got a good beat, it's going to be a relatively fast walk cycle. It's watermarked, as in when it plays through, it says premiumbeat.com every now and then, but also we can download a preview MP3. What you play back on the site here is actually very high quality. The MP3 is lower quality and it's going to be watermarked. But the advantage is you can download that and use that in your project and not actually pay the price, whatever it's going to be, until your client agrees. So let's say I like Morning Wanderer. That's going to do the trick for me. So I can download the MP3 and I can stick it in my appropriate folder. I actually already downloaded it. And of course you've got loads and loads of different options to actually work through on something like this, which is very high quality music. And then we're going to go back to After Effects. Um, but actually we can bring the item into After Effects. So if I double click I can go and get the item. Here it is here and bring it in. But actually to start off with we're going to find it very hard to get a perfect loop. So if I bring it down to the bottom of my timeline, I, I quite like to have my music at the bottom of the stack. Um, just the way I work, some people have audio at the top of the stack. If you want to see the waveform, by the way, you can untwirl. So I can untwirl and untwirl audio and then untwirl waveform. And you'll see if I just move this up, there's the waveform to see through. However, the quick way of doing it is to select the layer and LL. LL. And then you've actually got the waveform there. And then you can try and find a loop. So obviously the, we'll start at the beginning, which is where we want to be. So I'm actually brought my work area bar into the beginning because it's actually gone to the very beginning of the audio. So I hit B on my work area bar to bring it to there. Then I can hit 0 on my number pad to do a RAM preview because you can't hear audio if you hit the space bar. And let's see if I can find out roughly where it should be. So it should be about here. So if I do N to end my work area bar, hit the 0 key. Now, is that right? Is that wrong? It's kind of close. Let's try it again with going on one. It's close. If you want to be a little bit more precise, however, I would recommend using Adobe Audition. And I'll show you how you do that. I've got Audition here, and I can load in the actual waveform again. It's an MP3, but that's fine. I'm going to load it in, and I'm going to zoom right in. So this is the zoom bar at the top here. So if I just drag in so I can see those first few bars. And I'm going to drag out roughly what I think should be a, a, a walk cycle. So let's just uh, zoom in a little bit more on that so we can get a little bit closer. And maybe bring this first one out so it's literally at the beginning of the music. And then it's on loop. And I can push play or I'm just hit the space bar. Right, so it should be around about here. So I can pull that in to about there. Let's see if that works. Not quite. Let's just go forward a little bit more. Nope. So maybe we need to be out here somewhere. Let's just try out here and see where we are. Almost. I think we're almost at a loop there. The advantage you can see of working with Audition is you can be a lot more precise about your looping. Now that's close enough for, for a working example. That's pretty much a loop. So what I can do is I can save that loop as a single file and use that as a reference to make sure that I get my in and my outs so I can do my beginning and end keyframes in After Effects a lot better. So now I've got this little selection. If you right click in the work area bar, you'll see you've got one of them that says copy to new. And if you click copy to new, it's going to take that little sample and put it in a brand new file all on its own. So if you just hit the space bar again. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So what I can do is I can save that one. So if I do File, Save As, and I'm going to stick it into the same folder that I've saved it before. So I'm just going to call it uh, Loop Reference. So there's my loop reference. You can save it. You don't need to save it as a WAV. This is an MP3 already, and it's, so I'm going to save it as an MP3. I don't need anything very high quality. 
Um, in fact, you, you can have very low quality if you want to play with sample rates and what have you, but we don't need to with this short one. So I click OK, and it warns you that MP3 is lossy, but seeing you're never going to use it, it really doesn't matter. We just click OK, and I can close down Audition. I've got my loop, so I can bring my loop in to After Effects. So double click to bring it in. There's my loop, my reference. Double click to bring it in, and drop it, say, below, below the other audio just there and hit LL and then I can see the waveform and now I can go in and I can begin to make sure that we're at the right place so now you can see that they don't actually start at the same time so I'm just going to pull this one frame over again it's not perfect you can see that we're not quite on the loop there perhaps there's pretty much one frame here if I go back one frame perhaps you see it's not perfect but I'm just going to go with that one I can't move if I try and move the one above I'm still not going to make a perfect movement but my in point is there right at the beginning of the sequence my out point should be just there but you bear in mind that the, the the one that I actually want to use starts before this one so I need to get to the end of this one literally there and it, bear in mind it plays the next frame after so I'm going to make n to end my work area bar there I was fairly close and now I should be able to it's not going to link up exactly but let's just turn off the reference and listen to the actual one that we're working with now you can hear actually in After Effects there's a slight pause before it goes back to the beginning whereas in Audition we didn't really have the same pause this is what again why Audition is, is much better to work with for sorting out your loops but I now know that this is a loopable area it's not perfect because of the sample rates between video and audio, but it's close enough to get a relatively good walk cycle. And the idea behind the walk cycle is I'm going to have a beginning keyframe and an end keyframe, which you can see is going to be two seconds, which is actually a pretty good walk cycle. And we can sort it all out from there. So in the next tutorial, now that we've got this sorted out, we know roughly we've got a good walk cycle length. We're going to be pretty much on the beat. We're just going to do an animation just to show you how to make sure that we can get this man looping all the way down the timeline with a very simple walk cycle because we've used these IK controllers. My name's Andrew Davis and I'll talk to you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.